if you are someone who is in charge of an organization, a senior executive, it doesn't matter if it's a business organization or a public organization or a non-governmental organization, it doesn't matter. If you're a senior manager, you know, C-class or C-suite executive, a CEO, a government minister, a prime minister, even a head of state, although in the case of head of state it's going to be a little more complicated, but you'll get the point now. If you are in that position, in charge of a department, an organization, a company, a ministry, you have one of three main situations that you will have to deal with. Either the organization or the department or the ministry or the country is on the right track, in good shape, and all what is needed is fine tuning, more efficiency, more productivity, minor adaptation, slight changes. You know, you're on the right course and things are great. You just need to optimize a good situation. That's scenario number one. There is another scenario where the organization or the country or the ministry or the department is not on the right track. It is not on the right track. So what is needed is to put it on the right track. And for that, you need more than just fine tuning. It is more than optimization or a matter of efficiency or productivity. You need transformation. I'll give you a common global or globally known example and that's what happened to IBM when it moved from being a hardware you know um, heavy machinery computing machinery organization into more towards a consulting or a consultancy organization that kind of shift required transformational leadership and this is scenario number two a third scenario is where you want to take the organization or the department or the country or the ministry to a level that is a world-class level. You become a pioneer. And for that, I can use the example of Apple when Steve Jobs came back to Apple, how he transformed the organization beyond just efficiency and productivity, beyond just transformation, he turned it into a pioneering organization. Or let's say Lee Kuan Yew in Singapore, when he took over the leadership of the country, he transformed it into a world-class country. So there are these three scenarios that usually are the case when you are taking over such a, such a responsibility when you're handed over such a challenge now there could be scenarios that are in the middle of course multiple variations of those but in general to make things simple i have categorized them into you know my gradual evolution and adaptation number one number two transformation number three building a world-class pioneering organization department you know line of business or a ministry or a country now i'm not going to talk about the first scenario the first scenario is relatively easy i mean nothing is easy when it comes to leadership especially when you're talking about complex de departments or organizations or ministries or you know uh, uh, countries but in general when you're talking about optimization uh, if the organization or the department or the country is on the right track, usually it's an easier challenge from a leadership perspective than the other two scenarios where you have to do complete transformational inter intervention or when you have to create an organization that's a pioneer and a world class at a world class level that is at the horizon that is 
the, the gold standard of the industry. Now, in these two scenarios, what do you do? I'm going to go through a number of steps that will outline a roadmap that a CEO, a senior executive, a minister, a prime minister, you know, a head of a department, somebody who is in charge uh, of such a setup, a set of steps that you could use as a roadmap to fulfill that purpose that you want to achieve. And that is transformation or building a world-class setup or organization or a system or a country. Let's start. You can't lead and transform an organization if you don't understand the industry, the sector you're dealing with. In fact, more than just understanding, you have to master its understanding to the last detail. So if it is an organization in an industry, you have to understand the nature of that industry. Let's say you're running a media organization. You have to understand the media industry. If you're running a technology organization, you have to understand the technology industry. If you're heading uh, a financial department, you have to understand the finance world. If you're running the health ministry or uh, the defense ministry or the education ministry, ministry of education, you have to understand the universe of these ministries or lines of you know, interest whether it is health or education or defense. So bottom line, you can't lead transformation. You can't be engaged uh, with an intervention that is that deep and that is fundamental and that ambitious if you don't understand the industry. So know your business. You also need to understand the future trends of those industries. So you don't just need to understand the current reality of the domain that you're going to be dealing with, but you need to understand where this domain is going. So going back to the example that I used, what is the future of the media industry, media and entertainment? What are the future trends of the technology industry? What are the future trends of the health industry or the educational industry or the defense industry or the finance industry. So you don't just need to understand the industry as it is now. You need to understand the trends of where these industries are heading towards in the next five years, 10 years, maybe 15 years. I don't want to go into 20 or 30 years because that will be too far, but definitely you need to have a clear understanding of where this line of interest, business, industry, ministry, wherever you're dealing with, is heading in the next minimum five years, easily 10 years. And if you have a view of, you know, for the next 15 or 20 years, that's even better. You also need to understand your competition really understand your competition not just the current reality of your competition but where your competition have been where they are now and where they seem to be heading because from that you can derive conclusions on where is the trend going on what is the interpretation of your competitors about the current scenarios and about the future scenarios now, you don't need to do that so that you can copy your competition. You don't have to copy them. But at least you know that you need to know that so that you understand where other people who are in the same domain are moving forward. In what direction they're moving. They might be moving in the wrong direction. You might choose to go in a different direction than they are doing now. But definitely you need to understand what your competition is doing and their interpretation of the reality now and of their expectations of the future reality. 
you need to understand how they're investing their resources, how they're investing their money, how they're mobilizing their resources. All of this is an important part of the puzzle so that you position yourself in a place where you can achieve transformation or you can achieve world-class status. Once you've understood the nature of your industry, the future trends of this industry, you've understood the competition and how it's handling its you know, business and how, it's, how it reads the future, then you have to make sure that you very well understand the nature of the reality of your organization. You have to understand your organization. So if you're a CEO, you have to understand to the last detail what is the nature and the current reality of your organization, of the company, of the department, of the ministry, of the country. If you don't understand the current reality of your organization, department, ministry or country, then it is most probable that the decisions that you make, you will make, if not on day-to-day -day basis, at least on investing in the future or setting the course to move forward, will most probably be exposed to serious mistakes. Because to know where to go or how to go there, you need to understand where you are now. I'll give an example. Take you know, the, the, the maps, the, the, the GPS system and the maps that we use on our smartphones we want, we want, we, when we want to go somewhere. You specify the destination, but you have to also specify the current location. Only when you do that, when you've specified the current location and you specify the destination, then you can look at different options of how you get there. So you have to be very accurate in reading your current reality, the nature of your current reality. How is the country doing now? How is the organization and the department? Uh, how are they doing now? And you have to be absolutely brutally honest. You cannot build such a reading, such an interpretation on illusion, on wishful thinking, on why, what would you like to see. You need to build it on what the reality is, no matter how hard is the reality. Only once you've done that, then you can start thinking about strategizing. Because you've read your reality, you've read the future reality, when you've understood the future trend, you know the nature of the industry, you know where your competition is, what your competition is doing and where they're heading. So you have most of the components that you need so that you can think strategically. And for that, you need a strategic mindset. And when I'm talking about strategic mindset, I'm talking about the mindset of making major choices. Because at essence, strategy is about major choices that involve the allocation of your main resources. When we talk about strategic mindset, it's the mindset that can decide how do I allocate the finite amount of resources that I have. Because nobody has infinite resources. You always have finite amounts of money and budget, even if they can change sometimes. You always have finite amount of human resources, of uh, knowledge resources, of human capital, of uh, network resources, of knowledge and experience and intellect and skills. So you have finite resources. And strategic mindset, strategic thinking, means you make decisions on where to allocate your people, where to allocate your money, what do you do with the skills and knowledge that you have, and the other kind of resources, tangible or not tangible, that you have. So once you have made these decisions based on your understanding of your current environment and the future expected realities, now you can go to exercising transformational leadership based 
on the strategic choices and based on your reading of your current reality and the way things seem to be moving. That part, the transformation leadership part, is one of the most difficult part because it involves the mobilization of people and the resources that you have towards fulfilling or applying or executing the strategic choices that you've made so that you can move your organization from your current reality to your future reality in an industry you and you understand in an environment you understand especially as it moves towards the future while you're surrounded with competition so that's why transformational leadership at this stage is paramount because it is hard to transform people it is very hard to transform to change people even when it comes to some minor or more than minor changes so imagine how hard and monumentally difficult it is to go into the process of transforming people with all their mindsets with their legacies with their viewpoints with their values with their uh, histories with their loyalties with their interpretation of uh, the future and the present with the difficult and complex network of relationships and alliances and and animosities that they have in their current reality so transformation involves understanding all of that and while understanding all of that you mobilize people and you mobilize the resources in the direction of the strategic choices that you've made. Transformation also involves intelligent courage, intelligent boldness. Because since we're talking about transformation, we're talking about significant, deep change. Hence the word transformation, you know, trans, it means change, form means the way you look. So it's you're transforming, you're, you're changing the entire format, right? So it's significant and it's deep, radical change. And that within that, there is boldness. Within that, there is courage that's required. But we're talking here about intelligent courage. Because the last thing you want to do is reckless courage or reckless boldness when you're talking about something as significant and profound as transforming departments, companies, ministries, countries, organizations. So without courage, without boldness, you cannot do transformational leadership. And without intelligent courage, courage and boldness, there is a high exposure that you will make major steps that are in the wrong direction, make wrong moves, that will cost you significantly. Once you've done all of that, you have to understand that you have to lay the foundations of embedding everything that you've done in the right and appropriate culture. So what you have to do is turn and make everything that you have done as part of a culture so that it goes and it filters into the entire organization, the entire country and the entire ministry. Because transformational leadership and change at that level if you want to you know move a company or organization or a department from a certain course into a completely different course or if you want to move a setup a system into a world class level you have to do that you have to make sure that this spirit is filtered into the entire organization at every level that's why i'm talking about culture because what is culture culture is the way things are done in every aspect culture is manifested in the way we handle our relationships the way we practice what we do the way we interact the way we deal with 
reality, the way we deal with problems, the way we deal with our mindset. So you have to establish the right culture so that whatever you have done covers every aspect of your country, organization or department. Here we go into consolidation because culture cannot sustain itself. It cannot become a deep-rooted culture that will continue to the future, towards the future, that will sustain all kinds of you know, expected and unexpected uh, future shocks and problems and tsunamis. You know, God knows what will happen in the future. You need to consolidate all of that. And for that, you need time. You can't, you can't shortcut, you know, or short circuit, you choose the right term. You can't have a shortcut or, you know, a quick fix into doing all what we talked about without giving time its time. Culture needs time to be established at a deep level. Transformation needs time to remain there. So consolidation is ultra important. Why is this so? Because if it's not very well consolidated, if the transformation you've done is not very well consolidated, then any future stress, any future um, setback, any future radical change in the environment, the system, the organization, the department, the company or the country will go back or is at the risk of going back to its previous state. because. Whatever changes you have done have not been really uh, um, fixed properly into the fabric of the system that you're leading. So consolidation is super important. And you have to take your time and demand time so that you achieve that. Otherwise, you leave, or things happen, the system will go back to its previous default setup. And all the effort would have been wasted with all the opportunities. And maybe your entire survival um, comes back to be at stake. To do all of the above and to move forward with confidence towards the future, you need to create an incoming generation of leaders because a, you can do it alone, so you need people around you to do it. Number one. Number two, it's not about now, it's about also the future. So to guarantee that this culture, the transformation that you have done, the consolidation that you have created, these bold steps, courageous steps that you have taken stay, you have to make sure that there is a new generation of leaders that you have cultivated around you are very well aware of what happened they have the right knowledge skills mindset attitude they see in the same direction in terms of the interpretation of the future they understand the industry well they understand competition well they understand the organization well they have a strategic mindset they have the proper leadership skills and they have the right courage so that the entire team will move forward with the organization now five years moving forward 10 years into the future 15 years and even longer that's why creating and cultivating a new generation in fact wave after wave of generations of future leaders is very important so that your work achieves the desired result. Remember, here we're talking about transformation, changing the course, the entire course of the entire organization, department, company, ministry, or country. That's why you need generations of incoming leaders. And it is the responsibility and the duty of whoever is exercising this transformation in leadership is to cultivate these leaders is to make sure that this generation is being prepared because if it's not your responsibility as a CEO as you know 
a chief executive or as a C-class executive or as a minister or prime minister, then who's going to do it? Here we go to the issue of staying on the cutting edge. Because now you've done all of that. You've made the choices, you've taken the bold steps, you've done cons uh, transformational leadership, you've done consolidation, and you've prepared leaders, right? Future leaders. So what do you do now? Because we are in a constant motion towards the future, because of the advance in technology and the way life is progressing and is becoming more and more complex, and there's more competition, more uh, connectivity, you know, more communication of ideas, you need to stay on the cutting edge. How do you do that? By creating a culture that cherishes and, in, and encourages continuous learning. How do you do that? By making sure that you're always aware of what's happening around you in terms of technological advances, in terms of new ideas, new theories, new sets of smarter processes. You can't stay you know, one or two steps behind. You have to be at the cutting edge. If you do that, there is a risk that you might miss the future trends and you might be behind competition with time. So you have absolutely, you have to make sure that you're always at the cutting edge of whatever you're doing. You integrate all new technologies that are appropriate for your industry. You integrate new ways of thinking. You integrate the right practices. And that's not easy because you have to keep an eye on what's happening around you and you have to always make it part of the culture that whatever is new is absorbed into the organization and has become part of our culture so that you're always at the edge. After you've done all of that, and if you want to, if you're that ambitious, you need to become a pioneer of innovation. So here we're not just talking about integrating new technology. We're not just talking about integrating new thinking, new processes. We're talking about you becoming an incubator for new thinking. So the, the new technology, the new processes, the new uh, mindset, the new spirit, the new inventions that are happening, are happening within your organization. You have become the gold standard of that industry, of that uh, system. Your country, your ministry, your department, your company has become the gold standard. People look up to you. When people want to remain uh, in the, uh, on the cutting edge, they come to you and see what you have been doing, what you have been creating, and adopt that. So you become the one who is pushing the horizon further and farther. And that requires creativity. That requires experimentation. That requires innovation. That requires creating the right culture that thinks of innovation, that cares about being a pioneer that has the commitment and the dedication and the proper leadership so that it can always, always, always think about how do we, you know, make things better? How do we take this further? I want to give some examples that are known to our times now, at least recently. You know, what the way uh, Elon Musk and other people and his team have been redesigning rockets the way they've created rockets that can go to space and come back and use them again and what they have done with electrical cars in these two examples in the example of tesla uh, and electrical cars and in the example of the rocket technology you can easily say that these two organizations have been pioneering organization they're not just on the cutting edge using the best existing technology, the best existing uh, uh, processes, the best existing methods. They're creating new methods. 
They are creating a new way of thinking. They are redesigning the way the industry should think about its problems or its services or its products. This is, these are the highlights of the roadmap that a CEO, an executive, a senior executive, a minister, a prime minister, a head of a department, the head of a department can follow if they want to achieve transformation in their organization or if they want to create an organization or a department or a company or a country that is a first class in its line of business, in its line of interest, in the system that it occupies. Is it doable? Yes, it is doable. Is it hard? It is very hard, very challenging. But it has been done and it is currently being done. If you look at the industries, I am sure you can specify in every industry who is at the cutting edge and who is a first class or a world class or a pioneer in this industry. So it can be done. What you need to do is to determine and decide what is the kind of intervention you want to make in this department or this company or this group of company or this ministry or this country. What is it that you want? Do you want to make minor, soft, gradual changes that mainly aim at fine-tuning, optimizing, increasing efficiency, increasing productivity? Is it what you want to do? Or do you want to change the entire course of the organization into a different direction through transformational leadership? Or you want to go beyond just transformational leadership. Beyond. You don't just do that and stay there. You do that and you keep going forward so that you become the gold standard of this organization, the pioneer of this industry. It is a leadership choice that has to be done. And after it's done, you have to have the right leadership mindset so that you can embark on this very challenging and exciting and absolutely fascinating journey of excellence and brilliance.